Hey mamas, if you are trying to prepare your body for birth or maybe even trying to induce your labor, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my labor preparation and inducing moves to bring you one step closer to meeting your baby. I'm Bridget and I'm a doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and I love helping moms love their birth. For more tips and tools on how to love your own birth, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm so glad that you're here. So you want to meet your baby. I get it, mama. These moves have helped so many women, myself included, who are in the same boat as you who just want to make sure they are best preparing themselves for birth and maybe for some of you trying to get this labor show on the road. So by the end of this video, you will have several methods to help prepare your body for birth or induce your labor using a birth ball. So let's get started. If you have started this video and you don't have a birth ball yet, I have an awesome, inexpensive birth ball that you can get. It's on my Amazon list. I'll, I'll link it down in the description below, but I love this one. I have all my mamas use it, um, and I use it for my own pregnancy and my own birth, and I absolutely love it, so go get you one. So first of all, if you are one of those mamas that I mentioned who is hoping to go into labor like yesterday, I wanna preface this video by saying that there is no magical position or method to use with a birth ball or without a birth ball that is magically going to send your baby through your birth canal. But what this video is going to help you do is find great positions using a birth ball to help really engage baby in an optimal way in your pelvis to be putting pressure on your cervix to helpfully, hopefully kickstart labor. So before I get started on any of the moves, I want to show you how to properly sit on a birth ball. So as you are situating yourself on your birth ball, the first thing I want you to be mindful of is your stability. A lot of times as you progress in your pregnancy, the bigger you get, oftentimes the more unstable you get. And so it's important that if you are feeling unstable that you have something near you, a couch or a table or a sturdy chair that you can hold onto, or you do this with your birth partner or a friend or whoever, just so that you have someone there who can give you stability if you are needing it. Next thing I want you to be aware of is the angle of your legs when you are sitting on your birth ball. So you wanna make sure that your birth ball is at a good height so that your legs are at about a 90 degree angle. If you are experiencing any lower back pain, which a lot of pregnant women experience, you can inflate your ball a little bit more so it's a little bit higher, a little bit sturdier, and so it'll really help promote a good posture and take a bit of that pressure and that tension off your lower back. So as you can see, as I'm sitting on the birth ball, my knees are at about a 90 degree angle and that's about a good place to have it. If your birth ball is too big, you might be too high up on your birth ball um, and that's not going to be optimal for having the movements that I'm going to be sharing with you. And if you're too low, it's going to promote a like poor posture and you wanna make sure that you are having um, a nice straight posture as you are doing these movements. Just so you know, the ball that's on Amazon is the one that I'm using now and I am 5'3" and I use the size large ball and that's 58 to 65 centimeters. So, you know, if you're shorter, you want a smaller ball. Typically, if you're taller, you want a larger ball. Um, but the best way to know if your ball is a good fit for you is to, you know, inflate it and see how you sit on it. And if your legs are at that nice 90 degree angle, then you found a good fit for you. So now that we've gotten all of that covered, we can get started on our birth ball positions. So the first position that I wanna show you is just a nice, easy stretch for you that helps open up the chest and the womb so that your baby can move a little bit and helps relieve some of that tension in the back by stretching it out. So you've probably done or at least heard of the cat and cow pose that you do in yoga. So we're just going to do that, but do it on the birth ball. And the reason why I like that is because it allows you to open up your hips nice and wide, but it also lets you have that nice stretch that I was talking about. So as we are doing the cat pose, we just roll the ball back, keeping our feet nice and stable and giving our backs a nice stretch, feeling it in our spine. You can loosen your head a little bit, let it hang and then roll the ball up into that cow pose. And give that nice little stretch. You can feel your tummy opening up a little bit, giving baby a little bit more room, and then roll back. And you can do that as much as it feels good to you or as little as it feels good to you. But I love this one during pregnancy. I love it now just because it feels so good on my back and my body. 
So as we transition into another move, I'm gonna swing over here and I want you guys to keep in mind having nice open legs as you are doing this exercise. One, because it helps open and engage your pelvis and two, because it has a more thorough stretch for you as we do these positions. So the second move that I wanna show you on the birth ball that can really help with preparing your body for birth as well as helping baby get in an optimal position to hopefully induce labor if you are at that point in your pregnancy is just to do a nice little rock with your hips. And you can notice that my legs are still staying nice and outward and I'm just giving a nice little rock back and forth. It's controlled, it's not like all crazy. I have a strong core you can do that even with the baby in your tummy. And you can really feel the stretch too along your hip flexors, which is why it feels so good during your pregnancy. You can do these positions, these movements as long or as short as you want. Of course, the shorter you do them, probably the less effective they will be. Um, I'm just showing you how to do them and you can choose the length at which you do them. But for our next movement that we're going to do is just hip circles on the birth ball. And this is so good at helping get baby their head into a nice position in the pelvis and so you just Imagine you are drawing a circle with your bottom and you just make nice big circles with your hips. And after you've been doing that for a little bit, you want to switch sides so that you're evening out both of your sides. So now the movement that I'm gonna show you is a figure eight, and this takes a little bit more mental energy because you know it's not just drawing a circle, and now we're doing a figure eight. Um, but it's the same concept, so just like we pretended we were drawing a circle with our hips, now we are drawing an eight. And so the first one that I want you to do is just drawing a circle or a figure eight with your hips from left to right. Just like this, keeping my hips nice and stable. Maybe you need to hold on to a chair for this in front of you, or you can hold your birth partner's arms if you need some more stability. But just doing it back and forth like this, and it really does help it help open up your pelvis. I can feel it in my hips already. So I just showed you doing the figure eight from side to side. Now I want you to try doing the figure eight from front to back. So instead of doing it left to right, now we're going forward and backward, keeping our legs nice and open like this. And just imagine your baby moving with you, engaging in your pelvis, putting pressure on your cervix if it's that time for you and really engaging in the optimal position for birth. And if this is not time for your birth and you are still doing these exercises, you are just preparing your pelvis, helping it open up very nicely so that you are getting ready for birth. So those are a few exercises that you can be doing on the ball and they are really simple, but they are really effective in helping open up that pelvis, stretch out those legs, stretch out that back if you're having any tension and helping baby engage into a good position in the pelvis. So the last position that I wanna show you while we're sitting on the birth ball is a light little bounce. And this is really good if you are trying to induce labor because it's just allowing gravity to use baby's heaviest part of their body, their head, to put pressure on your cervix. And so it's just a nice little way to help get labor started. Um, and it's also really nice if you, know, you aren't trying to induce labor, but you just wanna have a little bit of movement. If you are feeling like you're sitting in a chair all day, I really recommend you using a birth ball to sit on instead of a chair so that you have that movement throughout the day so that you're not sitting in that like like unmovable seat and so you have a little bit more movement and a little bit more flexibility with your hips. So if that's you, have a little bit of bounce in, with your birth ball and it feels really good and it might just help you kickstart labor. So those are some really simple movements that you can do that are actually very effective during your pregnancy to help prepare you for birth or to help you induce labor if that's where you're at during your pregnancy. So try those movements out. Let me know what you think about them, but not all movements have to be done on the birth ball. So let's get off the birth ball for a little bit and let me show you some movements that you can do with it, but not sitting on it. <laughs> 
But before we start on these other movements, I have a question for you guys. I know that so many pregnant women experience those aches and pains that just accompany growing a human. And so I know for me, I had a lot of tension in my hips and what helped me the most was walking, using a birth ball or doing yoga. But I wanna hear from you guys so that you guys can be helping each other out. What were some of your aches and pains and what helped you best relieve those? So the first position that I wanna show you is a really easy one and I'll show it to you from a, diff a few different angles so that you get a good idea of how to do it. Um, but it's pretty easy. You just stick your chest over the birth ball so you're nice and relaxed, kind of like you're on all fours. You still wanna have your legs nice and open like this, but this is a really comfortable position for you so that you can open up your belly space so that baby has a you know, a good amount of room so that they can be moving around to get in that optimal position for birth if they aren't already in one. And it also relieves a lot of that tension on your back because all that pressure is being now forward and not always on your back like it is most of the time during pregnancy. So when you're just like this, you can relax nice and easy like this. You can put your head down and relax on the ball like that. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm rocking side to side. I'll show you from this angle. Just having a nice little rock back and forth, creating space for your baby and letting all that tension go from out of your back. So at the beginning of this video, we did cat and cow while sitting on the ball, but you can also do it while you are on all fours using the ball for support. So you just get nice and stable with your elbows on the birth ball and you stretch out your back doing the cat and then the cow. Cat, breathing while you're doing this and cow. And again, this allows for that tension to be released from your back and create space in your womb for your baby to be moving around. To set up for our next little movement, I just want your bottom sitting over your heels and a nice little opening between your legs, not so much so that you feel a deep stretch, but just enough so that as you drape yourself over the birth ball that we're, like we're about to do in just a second, your belly rests just nice and easy between that opening and your legs. So when you have that opening, you just rest your chest lightly on the birth ball like this, and it, you can feel a little stretch in your legs. And it, again, just creates an opening for baby to move around in your tummy to get in a good position. And it's just a nice, relaxing, restful, but effective movement that you can do. The last movement that I want to show you is not so much for birth prep or induction, but is like such a relief during pregnancy. So I feel like I need to show you how to do it. Um, and it's just a nice shoulder stretch and a lot of times women during pregnancy hold tension in their upper backs and in their shoulders especially if they have other kids that they have to be running around chasing and so this is a really nice one so again we're just in our child's pose um, like we just did in our last in our last movement and what I want you to do is put your hands in the middle of your ball and stretch forward so that your head goes between your arms and you feel a little stretch in your shoulders you can add a little bit of a rock. You can come up and then back down. You can do one arm for a deeper stretch. Trade arms. And then you come back up and it's a amazing little stretch that is going to make you feel like 10 times better than before you did it. So these are some of my favorite movements to do with a birth ball to help you prepare your body for labor, to help baby get into an optimal position for birth, and to make you feel great as you're growing a human. So all of these movements have been for you to use during your pregnancy to help prepare your body for birth. But if you wanna know how to use a birth ball during your labor, then make sure you are looking out for my next video. It's going to be how to use a birth ball during birth. So make sure you have been subscribed and hit the little bell so you don't miss that video. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And I am so glad that you've been here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye mamas.